Okay, we have a quick project. We're gonna swing an outlet on the outside of this wall and uh, extend it off of this outlet. So let's take a look at what we have. Hey guys, I paused this video to remind you to watch all the way through to the end because there's a really cool purchase I want to show you. Looks like that got stripped previously. Now I've got big wire over here, 10 gauge. Looks like it was this wire was originally run to be 240. We're not using this leg. Let's see where the stud is. I believe the stud is here. So on the outside, there's 5 8 siding, so I will get a box that's one of those clamp boxes that doesn't nail into a stud because it's a solid exterior surface. It'll be easier to install it. Drop it right below it, and then we'll extend um, a piece of um, 12 gauge wire uh, through here and tie it in. So to get our position, I'm going to put measure from this window. So I'd say center is to, I'm going to measure from, this is an easy reference point, uh, at the beginning of the glass to the center of this box is about 8 inches. It looks like it's exactly centered height-wise at the bottom of this uh, window seal here. So 8 inches in the bottom, and we'll go out and get a reference position and mark the box. Guys, this is what I was referring to. This is uh, really a new construction box for a duplex outlet or a switch. Uh, it has the nails you nail into a stud. This is, and I managed to have one of these, is one of those swing clamp uh, wall mounted outlet enclosures uh, so you just cut a hole slip it in turn it and this wing will fly out and then compress against the back of the wall on the top and bottom and hold it in so I managed to have one of those so that's what we will use on the outside okay here we are we were about eight inches from the glass so I will mark that approximately here this should be the center of the box left to right and we were about at the center at, at the bottom of this um, window seal so that should be about right so that's the the existing box we want to come down a bit so we will drop it down to clear the other box and we'll have a short piece of uh, wire to go from that box to this box. I want to make sure I stay clear of this stud so it's okay to go over a little bit because I don't want interference because I'm not attaching to the stud. So I'm going to just grab it right in the middle of this seam and move over a bit. Maybe come down a bit more and mark it out. Now, if you want to make sure these tabs have to grab on the outside, so you want to make sure that you um, don't cut out too much. The box needs to fit fairly snugly, um, and then it should just slide, slide right in. So I'm going to use the box itself to level this line off. Okay, we're ready to cut that out now. 
Okay guys, I use this a lot. This is a really cool little tool. You can get right into it for small short cuts, get precise angles, very convenient. Okay, so it's this stuff. Oh, it looks like they had the... Wow, this stuff is tough. Okay, so here we are. Insulation. We need to dig this insulation out. Get it out of our way. Push it to the side. I can the box is right up there. I should be able to hit it with the screwdriver. There it is. So I'll get the ins insulation out of the way as much as possible. And we should be able to feed a cable down and see it here and pull it out. Sorry guys about the audio. I forgot to plug the mic in, so who knows what it's gonna be like. I guess when I get in front of the editor, we'll figure it out. So we're going to be able, need to be able to make a nice loop inside and up. So we'll get it about right there. Go ahead and hook it up on the inside here first. Looks like these were left out, which you usually don't want to do unless you have you're swinging another circuit off of it, another uh, outlet off of these other lugs. You don't want to grab too much. You want to get enough to get around the, the lug. You always want the lug to tighten clockwise and pull this around the lug as you tighten it. Not like that. You don't want to do that. You want to do that. Most people will probably hook the ground up first, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the ground here in just a second. Sometimes getting these around those lugs is kind of tough. Get it in there and you work it in. Make sure it's in there tight. Pull it back where you get good attachment Some people will use a drill with a Phillips But it'll slip to tighten it first, but then always come back with a flat blade and make sure you get them good and tight Don't get the colors backwards white bolt neutral white wires at least the standard in the US. Brass nut is hot, but always confirm it by reading on the back of the duplex outlet. Wow, that 10 gauge is tough. So I think I can just tie and twist into this wire and have enough pigtail left. 
I'll do this this way often. Because it needs to have good bonding. Okay guys, on this ground that we twisted, we wanna make sure we don't over twist it, but we have to put a uh, crimp uh, sleeve on it to make sure there's pressure applied, make sure there's a good bonding. A little big a little bigger sleeve than I would like but we can use this tool and really crimp it tight okay with that we can tie in the ground Sorry, guess my arm's in the way. Make sure that's pushed down out of the way. enough now we're wrapping up this job we have the outlet installed and we're putting the weatherproof plate onto the duplex outlet and we'll have this job finished up Make sure you hang around just in a few seconds to watch that bonding short how-to on how to bond the 12 gauge conductors. We'll see you next time. Okay guys, a follow up to our little outlet extension that we just put in. I wanted to talk about bonding 12 gauge solid conductors for duplex outlet circuits. 12 gauge is what you will use for 15 amp runs. Um, you'll see here I have two bonds, one with a wire nut and one for a bare copper with a comp uh, copper compression fitting, which is approved. Uh, a couple of things though. If you have two 12 gauge conductors, you don't wanna use the wrong wire nut. This is a large wire nut. Uh, it's too large for this. You wanna use the appropriate wire nut for the number of conductors and the gauge. And most people will simply strip the wire and just twist the wire nut on like this. Two problems here, the wire is trimmed back too far, you're exposing copper. You wanna keep the insulation inside the uh, uh, wire nut cap itself. The other problem is you really need to pre-twist these to make a good bond, then apply the wire nut. Uh, some electricians have tools that'll take this wire nut and actually twist it with huge amount of force. And as it applies the wire nut, it will actually twist the wire with it. And that's okay. So, but if you don't, if you're not, don't have that tool, you'll want to pre-twist these. Give it a good twist, trim it off. You want to trim it back to approximately a half inch exposed conductor. And then you want to apply the wire nut and twist it on tightly. That gives you a good joint pre-twisted with the wire nut applying the appropriate pressure as an approved bonding um, mechanism and then you're in good shape now here on bare copper you can use a wire nut to bond the bare copper or you can use a copper sleeve as i've done here and in this case we twist it as well 
So you would always want to pre-twist that before you apply the sleeve. If you're doing like bare copper junctions in the box like we did, you'll want to pre-twist it and then apply your sleeve. Let me grab a sleeve. These sleeves are a bit big. I'm out of the size that's really appropriate for this. This is about for four 12 gauge conductors or two or more 10 gauge conductors, but we'll use it just to show. Use a tool that can apply the proper pressure to crimp the copper bonding, the sleeve onto the conductor, and that makes a great approved joint. You want to check something out really cool? There it is. My new chicken coop. I was on a trip to Tractor Supply. I saw it. It's a new item. Well constructed. I love the design of it. Because it has the externally accessible laying boxes. windows to open up with hardware cloth for ventilation. Really tough roofing material. Upper and lower door. Nice large roosting poles. And a PVC sheet so that you can remove it and wash off all the waste, which is really neat. So there you have it. This year we're gonna have chickens.